under Iris class? Oh, yeah, I don't use yeah, it anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. I go like this. I watch Mr. Chews. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chews. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Do we go around and uh, introduce ourselves? That we do first, Mr. Chews? I forget the order. That's pretty <laughs> I think we should start with our respected council here. Let's introduce ourselves. Blair Littlejohn from the Office of General Counsel. Maury Moore, Principal Representative, and I'd like to introduce Maria Lloyd, who is going to be taking over my position in June. So she's going to be shadowing just to get here for this. Welcome. Welcome. Right. So Maria Lloyd is the principal up at Limestone Creek. <clears throat> Which school? Limestone Creek, up oh, in Jupiter. Very nice. Welcome. Thank you. Ron Bennett, Audit Committee. <clears throat> Yourself. Good morning, Tammy McDonald, Audit Committee. <laughs> Debbie Manso, um, Audit Committee. Dave Talley, Audit Committee. Noah Silver, Audit Committee. Don't you, Mr. General. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Elizabeth McBride, Office of Inspector General. Mike Burke, CFO. Nancy Samuels, uh, County Director. Chantal Knowles, RSM. Brett Friedman, RSM. Your name, Claudia Robbins, Inspector oh. General's office. <laughs> this is uh, Claudia's last meeting, so we're going to be nice to her just for this one meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Um, we have an agenda. Is let me make sure. Okay, good. I have a motion to approve the agenda. So, so moved. Second. Second. Very good. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have one, two, three, four. Okay, we have five members here. Good. So we're good to go. Uh, we have minutes. If anyone's here for the uh, December meeting that reviewed the minutes, to, could a motion to approve those? Motion to approve the minutes. Very good. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That passes unanimously. I don't know if we have anyone here from the public. Okay, we're good. Uh, number four, election of audit chair. <laughs> Mr. Chu, what's happening here? Oh, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, if you see the attachment on on this item, uh, by school board policy 1.09, and also the audit committee uh, policy 1.091, uh, which is highlighted here that um, this committee is still for an election of the chair and the vice chair, and also that um, Claudia had looked into the minutes of our meeting, previous meeting, that our, uh, our beloved chair had served on the committee for a little bit over four years, four years and one month or something. So uh, by, by policy that uh, there is a provision for the term limit, and however, the term limit could be uh, waived <coughs> by, by, the, by this policy uh, through appropriate procedure. So, uh, it's, open, it's open up for, for discussion what you all want to do. Liz, do you have anything to add? Under the provision that's highlighted up there, if you look at the uh, language that starts with the language however, it seems as though we, if you like to extend the term of your present chair, there would need to be a motion we are, first of all, let's say this, we are out of sync as a committee with the policy uh, because we arguably should have done this in September. Okay, we did not. So we're trying to just get on board with where we should be each year. Each year after August, we should entertain a motion for the chair. Um, yes. Question, Mr. Silver, are you interested in remaining chair? You have done such great leadership, especially for those that are newer, so. 
Um, Are you interested in remaining chair? I will, I'll remain chair if the committee wants me to. So it's up, it's up to the committee. So I'll, if the committee wants me to continue doing it, I'm happy to do it. But if someone else wants to do it, I'm happy to let the committee decide if someone else should do it. The only thing I have to say is that all the committee members aren't here, so I don't know if that matters or not, because we have a quorum. Right. Right. So if, if the committee wants me to, I'll do what the committee wants. If mm -hmm. the committee wants, if someone else wants to do it and the committee wants to vote for them, I'm very happy to, okay. you know, serve on the committee and let someone else be the chair. It's, it's up to them. Is there any other interest in anyone? Being chair? If not, I would like to make a motion to um, request that we recommend that the term limitation be extended and uh, presented to the board uh, for, approval. for approval. Okay, and if I did, I would do it only until the, and we would get back on sync, right? So right. there would be another discussion in September. In September, because that's when it's supposed to happen, right? Yeah, correct. correct. At the August. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ms. McDonald? I second that motion. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. In favor. <laughs> so what happens? It has to go to the board? Do they have to approve it? The board has exception? to approve it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you take too long. Okay. Uh, Claudia sent out, I think everybody saw it, policy 1.09. Thank you for sending that out. And uh, I don't know if anybody had a chance to review it yet, but. It definitely helped uh, bring alignment into some of the policies that we have been following mm -hmm. and we've been wanting to follow. So mm -hmm. I know uh, Ms. McBride worked on that probably mostly. Uh, who, who's going to present that, Mr. Chu? I will. Uh, can okay, I say something briefly? Sure. This policy 1.09 is for all the advisory committees, so yes. it's the overarching policy. It's not the audit committee policy. And Bruce Harris from the Office of the General Counsel is managing the process of soliciting for comments from the committees relative to this policy. And I would tell you, Mr. Chair, the only one I thought might be of some value is really what the area we just finished from 1.09 about the selection of the chair, mm -hmm. only because the language is kind of problematic. If you look at that language starting with however, mm -hmm. it almost suggests that the committee uh, the term limitation be extended must be voted on and then we come back in see if the board approves the last line mm -hmm. that committee's chair may run for re-election like we got to come back and pose the question again so that's the only thing I was going to talk to Bruce about is is there some way <laughs> if the committee vote that whether or not you really have to come back and the board approves come back to have that last sentence just the effect of doing that that's that's the way the court committee has done it uh -huh. I mean, he's okay it, the board has to waive the term limit mm -hmm. to make him eligible to run and then right. actually have the election well and me, then you have the election right so let me ask something pragmatic it doesn't really make sense because i was at one of those meetings and it, looked, it was acrimonious because it says that the committee has to recommend the committee not the in other words not the sitting chair the committee has to recommend that the term be extended. Right. So therefore, I would assume that they have a positive vote to, to make that person chair again. Why would they have to go back again? It should just be ratified. I mean, it's fine with me. I, what we no. should do then in, in our audit committee is we would have to, in August or the meeting before, mm -hmm. the committee would have to decide if they wanted the chair to stay one more right. time. Absolutely. So it just, but it seems redundant. That's all. Wow. And I was just going to present that to him. Yeah. I have no idea how the other committees feel. Yeah. I just thought I saw it, it wasn't pretty. After we, it was the committee, I don't like committees yeah. arguing like that. I mean, yeah. it seemed like some people wanted the chair to stay and some didn't. I remember that meeting about a year ago. That's, that's exactly what's happened in the past. And, yeah. You know, there's, you know, you're, you're right. The, when, the, when the committee, as a, a majority of the committee, votes to ask the board for the waiver presumably they would vote for that person but it's you know that that presumes that the board is going to approve the waiver which they have the discretion to not do right why would uh, well yeah. certainly if you read the language though if the board doesn't approve the waiver the party's term can't be effective i mean if the waiver is not granted the right. waiver really 
Think about this, Blair. The rate waiver relates to the fact that that individual has gone beyond the fourth consecutive years, and only that individual can go beyond the fourth consecutive years. Uh, so I'm just saying, and I'd really rather take this up offline take, take with Take it Bruce. up with Take it up okay, with Okay, because no other committee member would have been sitting for four consecutive years. Right. So, it, so let's talk about it later. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. All right, but besides that, I like 109. I think it's here. I do have a question. Oh, though. sorry. There's okay. Number. In the, that same section A, let me go back to yeah. 4A. Okay. Yeah, I think it's still, wow, I don't know, because it's under D3A. But anyway, mm -hmm. right above the paragraphs we're talking about, it says um, that thereafter each advisory committee shall hold an organization meeting at its first meeting after the school year starts in August unless otherwise stated in the advisory committee's policy. Mm -hmm. Do we have a okay. separate policy for our board? Yes. Okay. And that, in but, fact, yeah. the provision and you're dealing with for the committee chair and vice chair is part of your policy. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And, it, but... Does this just deal, this can't deal with the election of the chair? Do we, in our policy, do we have a provision about election of chair or that overrides what this is? No, this, this or is not. Your, from your policy. This first provision, let me walk over there. Okay. okay. And that's and the language up on the screen is from your, from your policy. Oh, it's been changed. I'm sorry. Okay. This, so here's the advisory right committee here. to the board. This item. Where's your book, your agenda? Well, right here is the advisory committees to the board. Yeah, but that's okay. That's tab number five. Okay. Before that is one point oh nine one. Okay, so it has the same language in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. that's we what I was. To add that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. No other questions from me. Okay. Anything else, Ms. McBride? That's it. Yeah, you Unless you're. Oh, yeah. What do we What do we do about a vice chair? Oh. It, it. Have you served more than four consecutive terms? Doesn't matter. Vice chair can serve. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if there's no. So he's already been reelected as back in when we had reelections. Yeah, you're right? stuck. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Till August. I mean that's. Sorry, I shouldn't I agree. interject no, she's right. my comments. I like, no, I think you're <laughs> right. But, but yeah. when was that? Is that, in, is that consistent with the policy, um, Council, Ms. McBride? Sure. It doesn't matter. I think you should do a motion to amend your motion yeah. to include him. And then have a full election in uh, September. But only the chair <clears throat> apparently has to go to the board. Right. Okay, do I have a motion for a vice chair? Let's just do it just so I don't get in trouble with you. Yes, Mr. <laughs> I make a motion that uh, we reappoint Mr. Talley as vice chair. Well, I'd like to know if anybody else might want to be vice chair. <laughs> no? Second the motion. Is that motion second? Leave things as they are. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Approved. Motion approves unanimously, Where? Clarification, please. Yes. So only the chair is going to the school board, though, for right. approval. Vice chair does not have to go to the school board for the approval. The chair doesn't normally go. It's just because I've... Right, the fourth and second year. Right, beyond right. The, I understand right. that, yes. Right. Okay. I've been doing it for 25 years, but I don't like acrimony, so... <laughs> Plenty of room for everybody. Uh, okay. Nobody's ever done it better. Right, we'll see. We're on number six, audit reports. Mr. Chu, we've been ordered the payroll system, is this correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Who's going to present that, Mr. Chu? Uh, later, I could walk through this thing very quickly because uh, it's, it's a pretty good report. Um, okay, all right, go right ahead. Nothing sir. critical. Okay. Um, so, today we have our accounting director here. She oversees the payroll. Um, this, this is one of the, the audit that we do uh, very regularly, sometimes every other couple of years. And this is when we, we, we take on because it, we, I think we pay $1.1 $1 .1 billion a year for payroll. So it's a big chunk of money. Uh, however, it's done through the system. So, I, I, so our focus is on the, the accuracy and integrity of the system more so than, than other uh, manual work. So um, the first conclusion we have is that we found out there are adequate internal controls 
we did um, a testing in five attributes, if you can see it on the executive summary, that uh, we concluded that paychecks were issued to legitimate employees. <coughs> and also, the newly hired employees, uh, they all have valid social security numbers, which is important. Uh, also, that uh, critical staff duties and functions, they are properly uh, segregated. And also, off-cycle payrolls uh, were handled accordingly. And the last but not the least, that the salaries for new employees uh, were set properly. So that's the test revealed no exception in, in this area, and the control appeared um, to be adequate. And the uh, number two finding, uh, we found out that there were some uh, new employees that were hired based on a sample. Uh, some of them had missing forms for, uh, for the employment. So we recommended to make sure that uh, all the forms be, be included and available so that we, uh, somebody else could verify the accuracy. So let me ask a question. Don't, that's part of the, the entire folder, isn't it? In other words, online employee orientation isn't, was it, you think they were lost or I don't understand how they could be missing if it's a, it has to be a complete, complete folder, doesn't it? How's that, how's that work? Sorry, that's under HR. Right, it's under HR. They're so, the ones that complete the, the, I'm not sure. So the district auditor, Don, come on up. I just, I'm just wondering how things could be found out in an audit that they're missing if it wouldn't, someone wouldn't find it and realize that it needs to be completed. Come on up. Yeah. Basically all the forms are, you know, scanned into the computer systems. Do you mind introducing oh, everybody here? Oh, that's Nicole, she's the, the auditors for this audit. Oh, excellent, hi Nicole. And Randy Lloyd is the audit director. Right, go right ahead. So, um, according to uh, when they hire a new employee, there's a list of the documents that they have to provide prior to being hired. So, um, the, compens no, the compensation department, they will review all the documents. And when I um, pick the samples and look at their files, some of the documents is not even there. And it were not scanned into the systems. Okay, so that's H, I understand that's HR. I'm just wondering what it is, if it was an oversight, if it was lost? Mm, oversight. So, so it's an oversight? Yes. And it wouldn't have been found unless you would perform the audit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Unless something happens where someone needs to go through that file and then they need to get it afterwards? Yes. So, do you have something, Brett? Okay, I'm just wondering if there's, I mean, the main reason we like to look at the audits and do the audits is maybe there's something that we can help because we, we have the, ability, the objectivity of it. We're not emotionally involved with it. Maybe there's something that needs to be done, and I'm not, I don't need to put you on the spot now, but maybe there's a recommendation so if there's some type of system so it flags them already so they know the file isn't complete without having to have an audit tell them that. In other words, if we could have a self-correcting system mm -hmm. internally, and uh, you don't have to, I don't know if you have any ideas now because you, you did it, or if through the process you can work with anybody else on the staff Maybe you can come up with something so the file isn't there. Because I can imagine that it could be either embarrassing or harmful if later on down the road we find out that these things were missing. And I don't know if it's the beginning of a bigger problem or it's just an aberration. So, yeah, Basically, uh, HR is uh, in the process of devising the current procedures. And then we will do a follow-up to look at the new procedures to make sure the new procedures will, cap will be able to capture any missing documents. Good. Okay. Mr. Bennett. I have a question. Uh, when you got 28-odd thousand employees, yeah. one of the risks you're always worried about is phantom employees because nobody's going to know all these employees. Phantom. He said the word phantom employees. Right? Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. People that don't really exist to get yes. paychecks because somebody was able to get them in the system. Yes. So I know you, the report says you, you looked at the controls and, and they were fine, but could you tell us what those controls are? What is the process and who enters the new employee in? And, and what do they have to do to get authorization for that? Randy, I think we did some testing uh, regarding the, any, any ghost employees, and, and this is one of the, the testing we, we yeah. do. Hey, there's a lifeline. You've got to answer yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wondered what the controls were. I know you tested right. them. You said they were fine, but I, I just don't know what they can are. You, if I can get 
Randy, yeah, can you I, go you through the consoles? To answer? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he might not be prepared right now. Are you prepared to answer what they are? Yeah, basically, uh, when, uh, like, uh, accounting department is one, one of the department process the payrolls, HR is the one who maintain all the uh, personnel records. <clears throat> uh, the personnel records are maintained by payroll, uh, I mean, uh, HR, and then when <clears throat> each pay period, individual department and schools, they will update their payroll records, and then send it automatically, send it to accounting services department. They will process the payroll system. So there's separation of duties between actual payments and then who can update and maintain the records. And then uh, in our audit, we also went out to uh, selected departments and schools to look at the actual uh, payroll distributions. Basically, we interviewed the uh, department heads and the uh, school principals to confirm the payroll uh, register, meaning the list is accurate, and we also uh, interviewed another supervisor level uh, employees, not the payroll uh, contact, who is uh, you know updating the payroll uh, records to confirm the list is accurate. So we have two independent persons to uh, verify the accuracy of the payroll records, and we also sample some employee actually to look at the ID badge issued by the districts to make sure the person is physically working there. If the person is on leave or something like that, not on campus or not in the department, we look at the uh, uh, leave form to make sure they have uh, properly approved the leave form on leave. So that's the process. That's where how we ver verify and confirm that all the paychecks are issued to I, I, a real I, person. I, I think you misunderstood the question. I wasn't <coughs> asking what you did right. to determine that the controls were adequate. I was asking what procedurally Walk me through when somebody comes in the door, applies for a job, who has to do what to put him on the payroll? And, and so, who does that? that is you may not have that information in front of me, I understand that. That is the HR department performs it. So it's a recruitment department, they will process and then go through the uh, recruitment process. Once it's hired, that, that will be another department within HR. That is the compensation information uh, services that they process and then put in the, the information into the computer system for the, uh, you know, the uh, employee records and the payroll process, uh, purposes. Maybe Mike, Mr. Burke can uh, handle it. Yeah. I'll just add, <clears throat> we maintain position control within the budget department. So uh, that's kind of the first step in the process. Any position has to be created by the budget department. Uh, but then there is a, a handoff to our HR department um, under Mr. Mitchell leads that particular department of uh, compensation, employee records and information, uh, as Mr. Law said. So uh, no position or no person get, can get attached to one of those positions unless there's a job action that gets turned in that department and processed by his staff. Um, yeah. Anything to add to that? To... I mean, I think, I don't know if, uh, that's something that's routinely audited, I believe, same as, you know, potential phantom vendors. Uh, I've texted Mr. Mitchell. I don't know if you want to maybe see if we can get somebody from HR to come in and add to this. No, I think we're okay. I'm gonna, it sounds like there'd have to be collusion, yeah. number one. And have we, just out of curiosity, I want to take his question from a different side. Have, we, have you found over the years, because Randy, you've got gray hair. You've been here for a little while. <laughs> have you found phantom employees in the district no. in any of these audits? No, never. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm not saying that's, I mean, that's good to hear. But I was just wondering if he did, how they got in, because, and I know the policies are there. So it sounds like there's a, a two or three step process internally without the audits. The only question I have is, when you said when you interviewed the principals and the department heads to confirm the payroll record against their actual payroll, which is a good audit function, I agree with that. Do they do that on a normal basis without you asking them to? Or is that, is that normally done or is it only done during the audit process? I believe that's, uh, you know, when we perform it, but basically every pay period, the department yeah. head and the school principals yes. are required to approve the payroll records. There you go. Okay, so that's another internal control that without After the, I After they mean, approve right. it and then they send it to uh, uh, Nancy's MS office for final processing. Right. Don't that's take this the wrong way. We like auditors and we yeah. want you to keep doing what you're doing, but we also like when there's policies and procedures in place where they can self-check because... 99.5% of our, the people here, in my opinion, are all honest. So if they have their own procedures and policies that they can, they know everything's gonna be done right, it's better for everybody. You so know, that's, that, that's the procedures that we do at the school sites yes. where the principals have the final, but good. I don't know what happens in the departments. 
the building. They have the same requirement. Same. Same. same thing. Okay. So every department has to opine on so it. The so the director again, you need a pretty good conclusion. Approves payroll just like we yep. do. Yes. Yeah. I, That's I, good. I have to approve uh, my staff uh, on every payroll period. Okay. Yeah. We weren't questioning you, Mr. Chu. I will make sure we are doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have ghost employee in my department. Yes, Mr. Chu. You can break controls down into two categories. That is preventive and detective. Right. right. And all of these are preventive. Well, I'm wondering, then, is there a follow-up, not necessarily from you, but somebody that's on the detection side? This, this is the detection control, internal audit. Right. But one of the things that I've seen people do is, okay, you, you get the, the employee list, and what you're interested in is the addresses. You sort them by address. If you've got more than one person at the same address, you've got somebody with a P.O. box address. That may be okay, making... but it may not be. That's one of those things you can you can look at the whole population. You're looking at a sample. You looked at 60. There's 28,000. Right. Okay, <clears throat> that's good, but somebody could still get through it. They would still need to have their social security number. Yeah. So we can't have a duplicate social security number. Uh, in you don't have to have anything. a duplicate social security number. People can can. There are ways to get phony social security numbers. I know. I assume you guys run the verification process and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about a variance report that would kick out yeah. highlights. It's right? just something to look at. You know, it's easy to do. You got the thing in a database, sort it by address, see if you got more than one at the same address. That may be fine. You may have a husband and wife or a child working at right. that. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's wrong, but it, it focuses where I'm going to go look. Right. And it doesn't take much time. Anybody with a P.O. box for an address? Yeah. I'm nervous, you know? Yeah. Right. Go look at it. Interesting. Good. Thank you. Okay, it's good. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you very much. Mr. Chu? Okay, the third finding is that um, <laughs> we look into the, the amount of payment uh, on payroll, if they were overpaid. Um, they, yeah, there was some, about $350,000 for uh, three fiscal year, last three fiscal year, and we found out that there were uh, reasons to it, mm -hmm. uh, legitimate reasons, like character error, uh, employee resign, um, and, but the date wasn't in on a, uh, on a timely manner, and or maybe change in salary, reduction in salary, and also um, some of the information may not be entered in uh, by by the department and give it to payroll. So, uh, however, we found out that um, payroll has recouped seventy four percent of the overpayment. So the main one hundred forty six thousand dollars are still um, in the way to being collected. Impressive. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah it, like I mean, out, out of one one billion dollars, so it's the, the number is very, actually very, uh, minimum. I'm impressed that you were able to collect three three hundred fifty <laughs> of four seventy six. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive. And then uh, we're relentless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number four finding that uh, we found we did some testing for the retroactive pay adjustment. Uh, they were processed in a timely manner. Uh, the last one that um, uh, we found out four employees had been uh, uh, terminated or transferred to another department, uh, but they still have access to the system, and then we gave the information to the staff, and then we also did some testing, and we didn't find any irregularities uh, by these four employees. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So overall, the, the audit was very... Pretty, pretty good to me. Very nice. So, Mr. Chu, what is the process for, or to whoever's appropriate, the process for uh, limiting access to PeopleSoft when someone is is terminated or moved to another department and should not have access? Now, uh, IP would perform the annual, uh, so-called annual audit of the uh, uh, access by people. They will send out the, uh, the access list to all, the, all departments and the schools. And then the department <coughs> heads and school uh, principal should reveal whether those people still need the access or not. So they will perform it periodically. That is IT's uh, the security function. But if there are changes in personnel, they, they have to inform the appropriate department to make adjustment, like IT get, need to be removed for uh, uh, the access. And, uh, and and what else? I think that, that that's number one. Individual that's departments the, uh, the review process. And number two is uh, some of the uh, uh, re re access removal are automated. They will uh, you know capture all the uh, you know termination records from the uh, PeopleSoft system, 
and then will automatically populate and update all the axes. So these just fell through the cracks? Yes, they fell through the cracks, yes. And they have new, they, they, they've improved their procedures. They're starting to do a daily, uh, on a daily basis, review yes. of it. Be careful, man. In IT. Had a couple yes, of questions, if yes, you're finished, course. Tammy. Okay. One of them is the $130,000 that's still due with the over um, payments. How is that being collected? Um, What's happening? Currently, we are recouping approximately $5,000 a every two weeks from okay. employee deductions. Okay, so that is, it's not like that's dead, we're not, no, you're not no, okay, we're, so you're no, still, continuing. okay, there wasn't, <laughs> there plus, we I also, did not see when I read it, you know, how, you know, plus if the conclusion em, of that. If okay. an employee actually um, terminates, yeah. we, we mark their uh, payroll records so that if they ever are rehired, we start recouping it again. Okay, <laughs> and then my... Okay. My other comment was that whenever you look at the reasons why there's overpayments, right. um, job abandonment ne necessarily is not in the reason, but then when the recommendation and the management con comments are on job abandonment, which is only $12,000 of this My response total? is not on just the job abandonment. Okay. It's on terminations. It's on any action that's um, taken. My so, response was for the whole finding. I just, again, okay, is what was going to be done to mitigate the rest of those errors. Right. Okay. Uh, recently, we've, we've been given access to a dashboard that um, HR only had access to. I saw that with to. payroll. Right. right. So we're seeing them as, as employees are self-reporting mm -hmm. that I'm going to resign, or if a principal is saying I'm going to terminate this employee, we have a, a heads up way in advance so we can actually adjust their paycheck before they leave. Okay, and I totally understand a HR and payroll is only as good as the departments that are providing that information and getting it back to them, so I understand the lag there. Um, but I, and I did see how now that's functioning better with payroll being able to access HR records that they previously were not, so thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Chair, Mr. Silver. Yes, Mr. Brooks. There was, uh, I was communicating a little bit with our counterparts in HR to, to Mr. Bennett's question, and one thing I forgot to mention, I think it's a key control that they pointed out to me, is that we require every f f uh, employee to be fingerprinted, and then we do a background on those fingerprints, so ah. that, that uh, tightens it up quite a bit. Not often Mr. Bennett smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Thanks, Mike. We've got an on the, on the spot response. Yeah. They're not even HR's here. The committee. Got the answer, Thanks yeah. for the phone. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mr. Burke. Uh, Mr. Uh, that thank concludes you. the findings of this report. Okay, and thank you for the orders. Appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to have your orders present. <coughs> thank you. Of course. Uh, six two, <coughs> district vehicles license verification process. Um. Just let me bring this thing up. Wait, someone's coming up, Mr. Chu. Yeah. We have an <coughs> auditor. Good morning. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Aida is our Aida auditor. Smith. So you want to go ahead and oh. okay. um, so this is an audit of the district vehicles uh, license verification process and um, the first finding is um, the school bus drivers records are being monitored by the school district so we found that um, the majority of the records were being um, are being monitored. Um, all of the bus drivers at the time, there were 803 bus drivers, and um, we checked everyone, and every bus driver was listed in the uh, MVR records. So you didn't do a sample, you checked the entire population? <laughs> For bus drivers, yes. Wow, very nice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and uh, number two was we did a review of the bus driver infractions uh, that needed to be expedited. So there's a process that. Um, the Transportation Services Department, they get a weekly update of any uh, infractions or change of address, uh, anything that changes in the um, employee's driving record. And uh, we just did a sample of 15 of them. And um, Transportation Services, they get the paperwork, they see if there's an infraction that needs, the way they need to take action. 
And um, all the steps were taken. However, we did find that there was um, some delays in the time of the infraction, uh, the employee being um, reporting it to the district, and the final uh, discipline um, as needed. So there was um, there was a delay um, in some cases up to 204 days, which was almost uh, seven months. Is that because of the reviews? Uh, yes. Um, what I believe is that the BART committee uh, was only meeting once a month, so um, some of the uh, delay was if they were already met then um, there was a delay to meet the following month and they also give the, um, according to management's response, they also give um, the uh, employee an opportunity to dispute um, the infraction. Okay. One point I, I want to add is uh, during the summertime, the bus drivers are off, so they cannot hold the meetings during summer too. So that may also uh, delay the process. What was the population of infractions? You sample 15. What was the population the was full, looking for that? Um, well, the way we originally started the um, population is um, we did it for a 15-month period of time. So although um, the original file had like 2,200 records, we did a sort based on um, the infractions, uh, serious infractions. And we came up with... Um, I believe it was about, um, I really don't want to say I'd rather get back to you on that, but it's about um, 150 in, 174 infractions, and then we sorted it based on um, the seriousness, whether it was DUI or just reckless driving, uh, that kind of thing. So in this case, it was just, we honed in on the bus drivers. But I would need to get back with the specific numbers. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, number three is um, there was a prior audit of uh, take-home vehicles, and there was 51 uh, staff that were not listed in the MVR. So, you know, that potentially could be a problem because these people are driving the vehicles all over the district, and um, their license was not being monitored. Uh, so we went ahead and we located those 15, uh, the 51, I'm sorry, drivers, and um, the MVR report of March 8, 2017, the drivers <laughs> still were not, although the take-home vehicle uh, survey was done, the same 51 drivers were still not in the report a year later. <coughs> so um, when we located these drivers, we submitted that information over to transportation so that they could add them in. Uh, also, we had um, 340 pool drivers, and 45 of um, those drivers were also not in the, um, the MVR report. And also, 57 non-district employees <coughs> um, were included. So what we found with that is that there were some drivers that um, were just, um, they put in an application to be a bus driver, and they were not hired, and their information was not removed from the system. So we were continuing to monitor, transportation was continuing to monitor <coughs> their records, although they were not employees. Okay. Chair, do you want us to wait till the end of her presentation to ask questions? Uh, or going no, I don't it? mind interrupting. I, just, okay. I was just waiting, letting her finish this one <coughs> okay. section here. Okay. So yeah, just, no, but I, I like, you know, I like the interaction. You want to ask a question? It's a good time to ask a question. Okay, sure. Okay. Go right ahead. Um, just my concern is that I'm not that the same things are occurring in 2017. It says with a follow up that of the 51 that uh, that were not included in 2016, they still weren't included in 2017, and then the same goes forward as you move down to to be, you know, of the 51 again of 2017, 24 were still not included in 2018. So what what actions <coughs> or policies have been put into place that will mitigate this so that all of the drivers, it looks like you're doing a good job on the bus drivers, but not 
and I, and I don't mean you because, okay. you know, but <laughs> the school district is doing a good job on, you know, tracking the bus drivers, but not the other um, drivers in the school board, excuse me, in the school system that are allowed to drive. Okay, so what um, our office did was provide that information to transportation services so that they can add um, those drivers in or remove drivers that should not uh, be in there. And then there was a management response um, stating that there, I cannot, I believe transportation services. You see what I'm saying? Because yes. the same, it's not getting corrected. Yes. Huh. So there's a breakdown somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome. Absolutely, and I, I totally agree with the finding. The person that's that was responsible uh, for that particular area is no longer here. We're in the process of hiring uh, a new person to take that role. Uh, as you can see, this goes back, you know, probably a lot of, a lot of years, so this is not a recent occurrence. Uh, so it is our uh, commitment to make sure that we rectify that and choose the right person to handle this particular area of responsibility. Right. So right. next year when I see this, this will be... <laughs> Really low. That <laughs> is our, that is our zero, hope, right? goal, wish, and prayer. Okay. <laughs> Are you the head of the transportation department? No, no I'm uh, the chief operating officer. Transportation falls within my purview of responsibilities. Uh, I, so I have. A, I'm curious now. Please. There is a there are 803 bus drivers, and I'm going back a little bit um, on the last audit uh, with regards to payroll. We were told that the department head has to review the payroll uh, list of employees for that department every pay period. So they're reviewing 803 to make sure that there are 803, or, and, then, and I'm sure there are more. That's done by one person every pay period. Uh, I'm not really sure. Shane, can you I speak know, to that? Well, I know that Shane does um, approve the payroll, whether he has his compounds reviewing the payroll, you know, I don't know what his process is. It is possible that he's having each compound review it, but I don't know. Oh, Shane is here. Welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi. Hello, Shane. Hello. Introduce, yourself. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Shane Surgewell, Director of Transportation. Um, yes, we do have um, support staff out there helping me to review the payroll. It's a big payroll. It's, and yeah, they it's do huge. review it and assist me to guide, go through that process. Um, I'm the final sign off on it, so you'll see my name stamped on it, but I do get assistance from all my managers. I, I am w currently having a, at least two supervisors for each facility of six facilities that do assist in that process. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's why you got to break it down into yeah. workable components like he's doing. Uh, I appreciate what you said about getting someone else in transportation to oversee this because there's an air issue. <laughs> I'm just asking. And the management's response, who made the management response? Is that the person that's not here anymore? No, that's, that's my team. Okay, it's your team. Shane, myself. Okay, yeah. so when you say, I'm just asking a question here. You say the targeted completion date is July 31st. That's, <clears throat> but you don't even have anybody. That, that's what you'd like to do. It's not like you, it's not like you have a timeline and, and you have a set of goals. I, I have a team of people. I think we can accomplish that. Okay, without even replacing that one person. We are in the process of replacing okay. it, but we can't wait until we get that person in. Oh, okay, we have good. to take action. Okay. So my team is working on that. Excellent. Very good. Okay. I like that. Uh, thank you very much. What, what, Go ahead. what procedures are being put or have been put in place on a go forward basis so we don't find ourselves back in the same spot? next year when we do the audit so after as you we can clean see we're we're kind of working through that as we speak now um, and just trying to develop a process that we can uh, have fidelity that we're going to be able to accomplish it so we're we're working through that as we speak now through that process so you so you're working to try to identify what the appropriate procedures would yes, be to yes. ensure that it doesn't happen as again. it says there we're you know we're in in the process right now of just getting that white fleet information from the various departments uh you know our our, our main focus obviously has always been on yellow buses uh and drivers and so we're trying to segue into the white fleet and use similar processes uh to uh have accountability for the drivers of white fleet as well as uh, for the vehicles themselves. So we're working through that process now. Right. That's why I was getting number four, because it's, it's part of the same I thing. I have a question. Uh, 
It says here that the White Fleet safe driver standards would be uh, completed by today. Has that been done? <laughs> what is that? That's a direct uh, says. management response. Oh, I see it right. This is number four findings. Yeah, no. Yeah. They didn't say, say they didn't. <laughs> well, obviously they're not. <laughs> uh, and we have work to do. Uh, I've been uh, with transportation for a year yeah. now. And so right now, uh, this report helps us, helps me in understanding where our deficiencies are. And we will continue to try to move forward and improve those. Okay. Um, well, we kind of discussed the solution, but I'll just go over number four. Go right um, ahead. So there were uh, no safe driver um, standards for white fleet, um, fleet vehicle drivers. So what we found was there were some um, 10 of 13 sample employees did not self-report, um, meaning that they, they had some sort of citation, um, something like a careless driving. And we contacted the department to find out if they were received the record from transportation. And the supervisor said they were not aware of um, any incident. And also there was no, at the time, there was no self-report um, form. I think transportation has since put a form in place um, so that it, to motivate employees to make it a simple process. Um, and also the supervisors uh, for nine of the 13 employees, uh, they didn't receive the uh, MVR. So the employees didn't self-report. Also, the MVR from transportation services did not get over to the supervisor. So some of the supervisors were actually at schools or at maintenance, and I uh, talked with all of them, and they don't recall getting an MVR report stating the uh, infraction. Okay. And um, Can I our, ask a question no. about that? Because just, I'm, so infractions, is there a certain level that someone has to report? Like if someone gets a parking ticket or didn't have their license with them, is it whenever they got pulled over, do they have to report everything? Or is there a level that, that, that if they get a certain type of infraction, then they cannot drive a vehicle from the school district's vehicle. Right, if it's, if it's like a DUI or crash, they absolutely should. So those are the only ones that they have to turn in and then because, and that's my question, I guess. Is, is, is there a list? everything or yeah, just yeah. A, a certain actions that would prohibit them from driving so, a vehicle? So I'm being told it's everything, but I, I think it would be prudent on our part to get with our risk management department and try to align as much as we Correct. can the white fleet vehicle with the, the yellow buses uh, so that we won't have um, different, you know, differing standards. I know that on the yellow, si yellow bus side, you know, they transport students. So, you know, there's a, a pretty high bar, but I think that's something that we need to work out with our risk management department uh, to determine kind of what is the right cadence for, for um, these type of violations mm -hmm. on, on the white that happen when you're driving a white fleet vehicle. Right, because if there's no disciplinary involved from the school's right. district's perspective, why do you even need that information? Right, I, you know. for sure. Okay. Right. It I would just eliminate some, some work. Yes. I'm curious, is it possible to do, I know there are a lot of employees, but is it possible and even something that's reasonable to do an annual or, or a periodic uh, check with DMV to match up the employee with um, what they're self-reporting to see if you're actually getting uh, the information and if they're actually reporting? Because it sounds like somebody could go on for a very long period of time and not self-report and have all kinds of infractions. Yes, we currently do that for the bus drivers. In fact, we're mandated by state and probably that's one of the reasons why they're so clean. Um, and as Wanda mentioned, our goal is to try to align the white fleet vehicle process Good. with the yeah. yellow fleet process. That makes sense. But we currently do that for our bus drivers. Every July, prior to the start of the new year, we get the MVR record and we go through that for each bus driver to verify that their licenses are up to date. There's nothing on record for them. And if that's found, then that's one of the criteria that would prohibit them from driving until they get that. So the white fleet is driving district vehicles. Yes. Is there a reason why, I, I'm trying to think of a reason why you 
that wouldn't be done for the white fleet as well, since it's not their vehicle, and mm -hmm. they're getting that. Ve I understand it's a benefit, but if they, if anything happens with that vehicle, the district could be liable. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we have good drivers. Is there any reason why we wouldn't align the bus drivers with them? No, I don't know at this time. As I said before, I would. Uh, I think it would be prudent to get with our risk management right. department and get their recommendation on this. Uh, you know, uh, many of our uh, crafts are over our maintenance side. Mm -hmm. You know, administrators have white fleet vehicles, mm -hmm. so we would have to figure out what that looks like in terms of enforcement. What's the what's the uh, penalty for having these infractions? All of that, and I think it's just prudent to work through our risk management department on that. Yeah, I'm surprised there isn't something already in place. That's interesting. Yeah, in that we have quite a bit of exposure with these white fleet vehicles and we weren't able to meet the the um, target date today do you have any idea when we might well, that's be able really to come just back somebody and not doing this? their job on, on the target date I mean that's what it really boils down to so as we go forward and we uh, hire someone in that position then that will be one of their essential skill sets that they're able to to work through this so I, I anticipate improvement as we come forward the next time this is looked at. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and absent of any rational reason why the white fleet shouldn't be held to the same standards, I'd like to hear what they are as far as driving records, infractions, and everything else. I well, I mean, I really don't know at this time. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying to give no, me an answer oh, okay. now. I'm not I, saying, no, yeah. I'm not saying to give me, no, okay. I'm just curious as to what. I can what tell you something, but you know, I just. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's fine. But I'm just wondering why it wouldn't be. I would think since they're district vehicles. And I mean, they, you know, I don't know how long the district has had white feet, fleet vehicles, but I well, know so in similar here. districts in my other districts. Yeah. You know, we've always, well, always had like set rules. If right. you get in an accident, yeah. you have to report. If you have a DWI, you have to self-report. You know, if you have a speeding ticket, you have to self-report. I would think the and list so, should go all the way down to any infraction where you're involved with, uh, any, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, tell me otherwise, anything that happens, because it's just an indication you want to, like you say, you want to know what's happening. It's not their vehicle, and they're entrusted to use it. If it's, if it's not their fault, it's one thing, but if they're doing something, going through red stop signs or red light, whatever it is, we want to know, because the higher risk Absolutely. of them, of them concur, doing something yeah. in one of our vehicles. Mr. Burke's been around the longest, so he knows how long they've had. They've had white vehicles here ever since you've been here, right, Mr. Burke? Yes, absolutely. Our maintenance, maintenance department, school police. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've had 20 them for years. 30, 20, 30 years. See, and I look at that a little bit differently because if there's no disciplinary actions, you know, or nothing that's going to happen, just because, you know, something, some infraction happens, traffic infraction, then why? <laughs> go through all that paperwork and require people to submit now if there's something some threshold that if you get you know three traffic violations in a certain amount of time or something like that then it results in some type of a disciplinary action then i could understand that oh, oh, but my if comments. nothing's going to happen no, no, then my comments imply something should happen but we're not even trying my comment I, I left that out but for sure that's what i'm saying they should be held to the same standards because well, they're driving you know, if, if that's uh, what she said exactly. she's got, you're working on this yeah standards. we're working on that but we do have uh, somewhat of a process if there's an accident involved it goes to the vehicle accident right. review committee and those you know Right. those uh, sort of things but if we don't know about it I, mean, I think that's probably what it is if we have no knowledge of it then right. how do we right you have knowledge of the it. bus drivers right. so that's what I'm thinking Mr. So I think we have yes. some improvement on and there. if I may yes. say so by departments because I can vouch for the transportation department any personnel within our white fleet vehicle team that has any infarction we hold them to the same standards as for the buses so by department right. you may have some but it's the goal now is to put it all together yes. and vet it through risk management to make sure we have a working process. Good, I, think I like that. Mr. McDonald. Chu, is this yes. subject to the six month follow up that, okay. Yes. So we'll we recommend it that uh, the same uh, guideline of uh, safety standards be applied to the white fleet vehicle. That's what Good. we recommend. And they agree, so they're working on it. So we will do a follow up and see if that's been. Uh, Develop and implement. Yeah, having not been here before, is this the first time this has come up, or has it been a repeated thing? The, with the, the white fleet vehicle and trying to align it with the buses. I don't Safety part. This is the first time. First time. We audited before about the take home vehicles, uh -huh. and there was a few years back. But Stephen, right. however, when we did the take home vehicle audit, that highlights some issue, mm -hmm. which is. That's why we put it like in the, in okay. the plan. Yeah. Thank you for the history. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you for stepping up. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Anything oh, else? Yes. Are there conclusions? Uh, uh -huh. Okay. Well, um, that's pretty much what I have for today. We will wait for transportation to um, get back to us with um, changes and uh, updates and policy. But that's all. Thank you. Did we move to approve the Thank you. No, we didn't. Thank you. Yeah, we need a motion to approve this report. Motion to. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. That passes unanimously. And we, we also didn't approve. That's okay. Good. All right. All right. He's coming on me hard here. No, no, no I, I didn't. Think. I'm talking about it right now. Uh -oh. Give me a minute. Uh, the chair neglected to get a motion for the first payroll report. Might have a motion to accept that report. So moved. Thank you. Is second. there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. <laughs> a little bit behind. Like Johnny Carson. Oh. Uh, money collections at Kingsley Palmview Elementary School. Something's <coughs> coming up here. Good yes, ma'am. Please yes. introduce yourself. Welcome. Susie K. Susan K. Susan K. Welcome. How are you? Very good. You're going to present this report? Probably. Yeah, nice how your orders present the report. Look at you. He's enjoying this. Nice touch. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. This was a special review on fee collections. Um, this is, I like to give Ms. Samuels credit, her department for this one, because this is an example of where accounting and auditing cooperate with each other. Sorry? What? You might get over oh, here. I can hear myself over here. Be recorded here. The, um, we, we received a request from the accounting department on this school. They had some concerns regarding some irregularities and not following procedure. So we followed up with that and we went up and looked at the uh, procedures and the fee collection records that were within the control of the bookkeeper of the school. There's other areas of fee collections in a school like your leasing and um, fundraising, after school department, those we opted to do with part of our fiscal year audit that's still coming, you know, still in progress. So this report is only focused on just the records that were within the bookkeeper's control. Any questions? And it seemed to come out okay. That was nice. So there was some discrepancies. There right. was a lot of just disorganization mm -hmm. was part of it. Um, she seemed like she was still learning her job. She had been new that year. So as far as the uh, non-compliances that we found, there was some minor discrepancies as far as the errors and some of them were not her some of them there was errors in counting by the sponsors we did a surprise uh cash count while we were on campus open up the safe pull everything out count it and even on that day we were there there was one particular collection that was 40 dollars off what the mcr said so that's not necessarily your bookkeeper that's right. your staff right go to number two i know mr barbieri is in here but that's his <laughs> That's pet peeve, right? That was one of What's the... What's going on? I, mean, I like it and I don't like it. Mm. Well, this was one of the reasons why the yeah. accounting department contacted us because right. the new yeah. procedures they have in place of scanning and being reviewed, yes. they had been noticing uh, delays and problems. So they actually went and did a surprise visit to the school. When they arrived is when they discovered there was pages missing from the binder. That's when they contacted us. Some of those pages of the nine that were... Um, missing three of them had been previously scanned into the system so we were able to see that they had existed at some point but they had gotten misplaced between scanning and getting to the binder again disorganization when you say nine were missing why are you using the word misplaced you're being are you being generous or you know they were misplaced uh I couldn't put my hands on them <laughs> so that's usually misplaced but not available not available right. there you go yeah I will tell you that since then they've been located. I heard well, they have been. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I heard okay. from the school and they have been located. So okay, so that's why you are no longer word, misplaced. That's why using the word misplaced versus yes. missing. Missing. Right. Okay. So they have they have turned up. So that's why you're using you're excusing it under the category of uh, disorganization and yes. due to the position. Okay, that's that's understandable. Does 
Yes, ma'am. Does the uh, bookkeeper need to be need more training? She's been receiving training. She gets. <laughs> they have monthly meetings. Uh, she has access to one-on-one -on -one training from the accounting department as needed. Uh, as long as they're attending their meetings, there's online training. It's all there. It's just sometimes it's a very large job to learn. Yeah. yeah. I always tell new bookkeepers you need to give yourself two years to really understand this job. Yeah. And it seems, is it is it naivety where they the treasurer and they all trusted each other had the full combination? Because I know there's an, an elementary it school. Happens. I know it's a different environment than a Sometimes high school or Sometimes what happens school. is you've got and right. Miss Warner can attest to this. You right. have small staff at a school, yeah. and what'll end up happening is they will get complacent, right? And they will back off on the controls that are really there to protect the staff. Right. And that's what we keep explaining, that these controls are in place to control, to protect your staff. Right. So the combination's been changed. It's been redistributed, you know, distributed. The controls are now being followed. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Since I've been on this audit committee, the drop safe procedures and these type has seemed to be a common thread throughout the district of issues. And that's only what you're auditing and know of, right? I don't know how many audits or, you know, how much information. We do every school every, every year. Every school. Okay. But there's sampling, right? Or is when it actually looking at everything? In the, past, in the past year's audit cycle of 17 and 18, we have actually upgraded to where we reviewed 100% of the drop okay. safe log for, for completeness. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and we're reviewing the drop safe logs and on a monthly okay, basis. That procedure okay. has come into place since then. Which is what brought, brought this about, this and that was your all's department that saw the issue. And then, are you required to turn it over to the inspector general's office, or do what? you, uh, whenever you fired, but fine, once we find that there's something <laughs> really, okay. I mean, that was the whole point of yes. doing the new drop safe Proven. log procedure is okay. we could get ahead of it. <laughs> And if they see something that they feel could be leading to potential irregularity, then yes, they're going to contact us because there's no benefit to them to not do that. Okay. So second question, is this always a, a separate task of a school or is it <coughs> part of the responsibility of like a secretary or whatever position? What are you asking? Which, which so is there a treasure it? position yes. at every school? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And then okay. there's a drop And that's all log. their responsibility is, is for? Could, well, it's not their only responsibility. That's what I'm trying to understand. Oh, I see. The treasurer's responsibility is to verify the amount of money that's been collected by other staff members, never to initiate a receipt, okay, okay? and to also make the payments uh, okay. by, you know, preparing the checks for the principal to sign and to make the payments. Okay. All right. So is that a responsibility under another position or is the that an actual? The drop the treasurer. The treasurer responsibilities. The is that a treasurer at every school? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or is it a responsibility of the treasurer at task under another position? There's a treasurer at every school. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it is their responsibility. Yeah. But the drop okay. safe log is someone else's responsibility Correct. in order to have the internal uh -huh. control. That's right. what I was trying to understand. Right, that's why I was trying that's to. That's assigned to, by the school. Right. Yeah. And now they have a document, because we have a document custodian on each campus that is assigned by the principal who has that responsibility. It has another position as well. Okay. A well, it's just a, a, well, it's a small a, part of someone's But position. as I'm saying, right, it's a small, right. There's not one okay. person that's only, that, that's not the only, their only job. No, no. Right. It could be normally too. It's a, but I'm going to go back to understand, especially in some of your smaller elementary schools. Someone in the office. You've okay. got a small amount of staff in a yeah. school. Some right. schools may have two people, the principal and the secretary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to have segregation of duty when you don't have enough people right. to separate those duties. Okay. So you have to have a little flexibility in some aspects. So we've put as this district has created as many controls as possible to mitigate some of those shortcomings. And I have seen that since I've been on the audit committee. Nice. Um, and I, is there sufficient time for those other positions that are responsible for the drop safe activities to get their job done. So there is sufficient time, so that's not an that's issue. It's just yeah. probably an issue of what training. There's, there's never enough time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we could all say that <laughs> is our largest uh, problem. Right. But um, right. like my, my secretary is our drop log, our, our uh -huh. doc document custodian. 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 Um, 
she's got to take time out of her job uh -huh. to make that happen, to sit with my bookkeeper okay. and go through. And I'm sure you allow overtime if it gets to that point. We don't do, do overtime. Not, okay. Not we have no overtime. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Okay. And maybe that's where we need to. Well, that's why we're always trying to make yes. it. You know. I was trying to make it as efficient as possible so they can get through their, their other responsibilities and do this. So efficiency is really what we need with also with integrity and internal controls. That's why we're always trying to balance the, the three okay. of those. And then in the, the, my pet peeve, which I'd love some help on, is to try and get as much cash out of the school as possible. Right. Because that, that's a double benefit mm -hmm. or actually a triple benefit. So getting the cash out of schools is, but meanwhile, we're still going to have this for a couple more years, but I foresee a time when it's going to eventually go away. Because electronic payments, mm -hmm. that's what you're saying. Right. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it will Everything save so much. Electronic, and that does facilitate the workload whenever it's yeah. electronic payments then? Oh, abs absolutely. Oh my goodness. Okay. Absolutely. Not only the workload, the internal controls and the loss of the cash, I mean, right. yeah, it helps almost everywhere, and the audit trail. There's so many benefits of having that instead of a $5 bill being passed around or something else. And I have to say that the, the fact that they've taken, the, I think when people used to pay online, yeah. they, used to ch they used to charge a dollar. Right. Yeah, that's they've taken that away, so that has helped a lot. Good idea. Thank you, Ms. Samuels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's helped a lot. Yeah, Mr. Bennett. I, I hate to say it as an auditor, but this is one of those areas where, you know, any control, the cost of the control should not exceed the benefit. Exactly. And this is one where you just have to put up with a certain amount of noncompliance. You, you, you're doing everything you can to minimize it but you're never going to get to 100% until you get the cash out of the school. And right. like any control, it's, it's only as good as the people that are actually it's operating made. it. Right. But the other reason when you see it so much, Ms. Manzo, is because, the, and I think the district's doing the right thing, we have to have a zero tolerance from people stealing money. Oh. So even though we're looking here and we, we just heard about a payroll of a billion dollars, here we're talking about $47. Of mis I mean, <laughs> we, have, we have to have zero tolerance because in my opinion, like I said, 99.9% .9 are honest. But the ones that aren't, they know if we're not watching, and then all of a sudden we find out somebody just took a lot of mm -hmm. money. And it, the worst part is it's taken from the parents and the kids that are trying to go on a field trip or something. Right. So I've seen it happen too many times. <laughs> so as a district, I think it, socially, we need to watch every dollar here versus tens of thousands of dollars are over payroll of hundreds of thousands that eventually comes back. Because it's so important, and it, and it, and it just kills the, the feelings at the school, and all of a sudden this money's stolen and these kids Put, raise money or did something and so I've seen it happen it's terrible so we, we that's why you see it so much because we put even though dollar wise it's not that big it's very important and you're right we're not gonna get it all but they need to know that we're watching all the yeah. time and constantly change procedures and controls and training to let them know how important it is and most of them didn't go there to, to count money they're not, they're not tellers at banks most of them went there to help kids and teach so we're trying to do everything we can to put the controls in place to make it easy on them but at the same time realize hey, you're responsible for this. So it's we're trying to balance. Is that right, Ms. Warren? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry. Ms. Um, McDonald. Mr. Burke and Ms. Samuels, I'm just curious if you know whether or not there are other school districts in the country as large as ours that are cashless at this time. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know of any that are completely cashless. I think there's some that may be ahead of us that have taken a harder stance on what forms of payment they will accept from the parents. <clears throat> uh, but Ms. Ms. I, what we should, I don't know if there were any, Friedman. maybe any no, lessons to be I, I learned. Probably, it's probably time to update our survey. Uh, Please ask the man at the end, because he's getting paid here all the time. Oh, and he's okay. outside. This man here has resources well beyond our district, and he was just bragging about that. So I think we should ask them to find out and get back to us next meeting. Yes. Well, I'll tell you right now, we're, you know, we do a lot of districts in Florida and around the country, and you know, Nona told you this is the most common problem everywhere is what you're discussing. You know, we can inquire and see if anybody, you know, how close they are, but this is a common thing because of the nature of, of the stuff, like the field trips, they need the cash on hand and things like that. So it is a common issue. So you have, with your resources, your vast resources, and it doesn't have to be next meeting. We'd love the committee, I'll speak for the committee. We'd love just to see how, how many, if there are districts that are doing anything besides what we're doing to mitigate this. One of the reasons is non-cash, but I'll leave it wide open. Whatever districts are doing, we're more than happy to have you give us a presentation at a meeting when you're ready. Is that okay with the committee? Absolutely. Okay, we want to get our money's worth from you, sir. <laughs> sure. 
All right. I like that. Good? Okay. Thank you. It also takes the pressure off Ms. Samuel. She has enough work to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. I appreciate it. Uh, any more collect uh, questions on Palmview Elementary? Thank you, Susan. Thank you very much. Motion to accept the uh, report. In timely motion. What do you know about that? Second? Second. All approved? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Passes unanimously, Mr. Littlejohn. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chu, uh, do we have a status on the internal funds? Yes, we do. Can you please inform the committee? Um, you see, you see on the schedule, as of a week ago, there were 22 to be audited. Uh, as of this morning, I think we have 14 more to go. So uh, uh, this you is call last that the week. home stretch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then we we hope that we're going to finish everything by the end of February, and then we send out management letter to by the Mr. end of February, uh, early March, and. <laughs> And I'm sure they will check everything that we do, all the cases, they actually check it. Yes. And, then, uh, and then we will come back with the final report uh, for the district wide. In the meantime, most of the principals have responded to our audit. So it's, it's a really timely. It's not just straight until the end. So once we finish a school, we get a drive out and get a mental response immediately from the principal. So, it's an ongoing process. Now we're talking about the final one I for, the, for the district. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chu. And uh, quarter, you've provided us with two investigative reports that we should re read at our leisure. It's a, cure, a good cure for insomnia. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Safeguards. No? I I actually, just for clarification of what our board's role is here, I mean, I know that we hear these reports, whenever they come in, we look at them. Are you talking um, about the reports we just got or the? In general, our responsibilities here as a board member, I don't want to overstep. Committee member. Committee member. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to overstep my responsibilities right. here on the board, like saying, you know, giving recommendations or saying right. something to staff. So I'm just curious, you know, what is it that? Well, we're not allowed to, Ms. McBride, and we have the policy. We not are not allowed to. Uh, ask staff to do anything. I know, but right. we comment, we ask questions right. uh, about internal policy. Should we not get down t to that level? I'm just trying to understand because I don't want to overstep by any means, you know, anything I say or. or no, I mean. Okay. You're fine. No, I think. Okay. I mean. Just the observations. No, I know. Of, you know but we're, we're, we're able to do whatever your brain wants you to do within our policy. So uh, sometimes we need more information. Like I just said, we're going to get it now from RSM. But Mr. Burke, many times, Ms. Samuels has come back a month or two later with more information. Are you going to ask for special reports? Right. Do what we do. Sometimes we do, we've done subcommittees many times, and we, we go offline, and a subcommittee of one or two or three will go talk with staff or find something out, come back to the committee. The, the answer to your question is, what's the goal? The goal is to understand, like we did with the payroll, the, what are the procedures in place, what are you doing, and that's what the board's asking us to do. The board doesn't have time to get into the minutiae like we are. Mm -hmm. So no, we get down to the so weeds. So we're okay. Not only do, is that okay. okay, we've done sometimes where we've done road trips. Let's go, go, let's go to a school and let's exactly see what this drop safe business is instead of hearing it abstractly. I mean, you, they put together, not here now, they put together a beautiful, remember that video they yes. put together? Yep. So we can go to a school and look at it. We can go to, if we wanted to, we, you can go to transportation. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't look back there, look over video. there, right? <laughs> hey, Roger. Yeah. Right, that video is great. So Thank you, you. Go to, exactly. we can, if we wanted to, we can do what we want. We're not, we go to transportation and go look and see why is it that the bus drivers or the back lights were not. We're, we can ask whatever we want okay. and then, I mean, obviously, we do it in a professional manner, but if they don't have the answers now, like she, they don't have them, they, they come back to us. That's, that's what the board wants us to do. And then the next step is uh, you're welcome to what I do when, when I think it's appropriate, not every meeting. I talk to the board, as you know, and I present what we found out and if we have any recommendations. Sometimes they get up to the level where the board wants to make a policy change if we don't think the departments are doing it themselves. Okay. I like self-correction, as Mr. Burke knows. We've been doing this for so long. I love when the department says, yeah, we had the audit, and now we're changing our policy. So the job's done. They're changing their policy. Then we go back six months later, a year later, and we audit again. That's, that's the itinerative process that I think works best for our district. I don't know how other districts do it, but we sort of self, just like accountants, we self-police, and we believe that people are doing it, and the orders go and check. 
And then we don't have to go rat out to Big Brother, who I think is the board, and say they're not doing this, they're not doing that. It's in the report. We're approving it. And the board will ask me, well, why did this vehicle thing? I said, well, they're working on it. Well, you're going to check it again? Yes. So they trust us to check it again, and we trust our auditors to mm -hmm. So the cycle is absolutely correct. So we're, we should ask as hard a question as we want, mm -hmm. depending on what's happened, first-time offense, and things like that. Yeah, so you, you, your own conscience guides you. And our policy. Well, Wait, Mr. Chair, maybe we should share with all the committee members, too, yes, the main policy of the committee. Right. But there are some other policies that set out also roles and duties of this committee that deals with audit follow-up and recommendations correct and maybe we can send those out again for the board yeah. and it has it was day one when i met with yeah. mr chu that right. i last looked at it but right. i just right. i have a it's very analytical pressure. mind right. and i want to fix yeah. things but i don't want to overstep my yes. Boundaries no, by our any job. Mean, by telling people that already know what's going on in their, yeah. you know. No, our job area. is to try and fix, make sure they're good. But I like, <laughs> I mean, making sure they're good is a police function. I like the fact that we're here, like you are and everybody here. We have experiences that they don't have only because we're out, you know, in a different environment. So if we could bring that here, we help them with it. I mean, I say help, they might not like it, but <laughs> we do the best we can. Mr. Mr. Burke a lot of times says, I don't need your <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we do. That's why the committee's okay. here to help the board, because as I said, the board doesn't have time to get into minutia. We'll get down as, as, as detailed as we want to get down. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. They're, they're very good questions. Yeah, we appreciate it. And as you see, that's why we have Ms. Werner here. We're going to have somebody new. I mean, we have the principals here, too. So if, if all of a sudden we're talking something and it's too abstract, it doesn't make sense, they'll be the first to say, that's not practical. We can't do that in the schools. So we have a voice of reason. Then we have over here, we have accounting right, and operations right. to tell us that's not reasonable. We can't do that either. So we're trying to bridge the gap of what's possible from what best practices. That's why I want RSM to tell us what else is there. And then maybe we'll say maybe we need to do this because somebody else is doing it. I think he's going to come find out. I mean, I ask every year. You haven't only been here a little bit. But I always ask our outside auditors, how is our district doing compared to other districts? Because they see 15, 20 school districts. And we always get good grades. But because we have people like you that are asking the question. We need that all the time. Yeah. So the Dropbox uh, video, is that something? Oh, that you haven't seen that? I haven't. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh. Yeah. We, may, we may have it on our website, or I'll send you a link. Yeah, send her a link. It's very <laughs> it's good. It's entertaining. It's, it's very well done at the school. <laughs> you should definitely see that. Our, our, I, like, I think Dreyfus School of the Arts is the one that actually prepared yeah, it for us. Yeah, it's a very us, good video. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, did, I don't know if you've seen and that. And students yes, involved. Okay, I guess you just missed it then. Okay. Yeah, there yeah, were students involved, and they did the production. It was very nice. Yeah, it's very good to see it. I like that. Good. Okay. But get some popcorn. Uh, any other comments or a motion to adjourn? Mr. Littlejohn, everything all right? Everything's great. Okay. He keeps me honest over there. Motion to adjourn. Before we oh, yes. Sorry, Sorry, Tammy. I'd like to thank Claudia Robbins for all of the oh, wonderful yeah. work you, she's done. Claudia Robbins. Yes, how well she served us. Yes. You're thanking her for leaving? the very best in your yeah. next endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank good you. Luck, Claudia. They're having a very good way, nice. going away party next Wednesday or Thursday. Yes, I'm Mardi Gras. Yeah, cafeteria. Two to four. Thank you, Tammy. I agree with that. Okay. Motion to adjourn? Some. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.